Welcome to my computer. If you're here, you probably want to learn to try to make some parts in Tripsing. So I'm going to try to show you guys the way that I do this. Um, this may not be the quickest way, but I have found it to be pretty reliable. So I often need to make SMD parts that are on normal, or I need to configure them slightly for the PCB layout that I'm going to use. Or very commonly, I want to make long leads on my SMD parts like this so I can hand solder QFN packages. Fritzing doesn't have an onboard parts editor, so we have to do everything in external SVGs. And SVG is a scalable vector graphic. And so what we need to know about that is that it's actually saved as text files. So we can edit it. We can edit the text files to edit the factors itself. So the best way that I have found to do this, especially if I need to work with pins that are a non-common number or a number that Fritzing doesn't have, is to open up a part in Fritzing um, that has a, a small number more pins than I need. So we're going to try to make a QFN 8 package or 12 package. We're not going to make the actual package. I'm just going to show you how I did it. So if I come to Fritzing, if I go to core and I drag in an IC, so the best thing to do here would be to select a package, a surface mount package that has 12 pins. However, there are no surface mount packages in Fritzing that have 12 pins currently, so we're going to select one with 14 pins. So here's one with 14 pins, and what we're going to do is we're going to edit this and make this a 12 pin part with our QFN style leads. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to take our 14 lead package, we're going to right click, and we are going to edit new parts editor. And so we're not going to edit this part because this is a 14 lead package and like I said we want to make a 12 lead package. But we, what we are going to do is we are going to harvest this SVG from this part and we're going to edit this part into what we need. So we're going to go to file and show in folder. And this will show the folder, the file in the folder that we want. So we're going to copy. We're going to Fritzing Parts, SVG, User, PCB. And this is the PCB part. You can see all the PCB parts I've edited. Don't let your files get dirty like mine. We're going to go to Paste. Come down here. I've done this a few times before. We're going to go YouTube. QFN2. Oh, 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 not that. Give it some long two so I can find it later. Alright, now if we right click this and we edit with Notepad. Um, I've done a little bit of editing in on these. It's good if you need to add holes or add other components that aren't in your component that you need. But your main thing that you need to understand here is that Fritzing are kept in two groups a copper group and then a silk screen group. Notice that in your copper group I start with connector pad 0 on my ID and I go to connector pad 13. So 14 pins in all. And then on my silk screen group these are all of my lines. Notice that they are in the color of white. Um, Fritzing doesn't care what color your parts are. It only cares about what group it is. And so anything in this group will show up as a Anything in this grouping will show up in your silk screen. Well, anything in this grouping will show up in your copper. So if we want, we can delete one contact. And I'll do this here just to show you that we can. Bring up our G. It shouldn't matter, but I like to. I'm going to go File, Save, exit out of that, and open this up in Inkscape. So here we are in our Inkscape. Um, we can see that we have our copper pads here. However, we can't see the outline. And the reason we can't see the outline is because the outline is in white. So to edit the outline, we need to edit our groupings. Um, for some reason, Inkscape doesn't import the groupings very well into the layers format, while other vector graphic programs like Adobe Illustrator do. Um, but it's fairly easy to work around. So we're going to go to Edit. XML editor. XML is the machine code. I'm going to scroll this down. Expand our Inkscape. 
the grouping G21, there's a title, G25, that's what we want. And you'll see if I click on these, that the lines are there. So if I don't change anything, they'll show up just fine. However, I like to see them. So I'm going to click on my little um, edit objects palette there, go to paint, go to wheel, drag it to black, close out. Do that to all of them. And again, I only do this so I can see them. You can make them any color you want. The color is not the reason that they are black in Inkscape. They are black in Inkscape because, I mean, in Fritzing, on your PCB, they are black because that is how Fritzing has designed them to match with their very, very pretty white boards. All right, there we go. So now we have a 13 lead package because we deleted one before, but we need 12. So we can come down here, we can go to connector 12. We're going to delete this because we start at zero. And so now we really have 12 lead packages. So now my packages aren't QFN. They're actually a really poorly SSOP package lead setup. So we're going to go to package four, which on my chip would be chip five. And we're going to manipulate this and by moving it. So what we can do here is we can move this with our X and our Y. Let me zoom in so you can see. And know that Inkscape treats all objects at the bottom left as 0, 0, so real Cartesian coordinates. We can set our width to 2, and we can set our height to 0 0.6 to match the others. Do it for another one here. We can increase our Y. We can decrease our X. We can set our width to 2, we can set our height to 0 0.6, and there we go. So we can move all the way around this. And in a similar way, we can edit our, our silk screen. And you would have to get these dimensions for what you're trying to do from your data sheet, from your parts. But this will allow you to manipulate anything that you need. Let's finish this up, kind of make it look a little bit. Uh, where are we? There we go. Alright, so now we're almost done. Um, but let's say that I have a really hard time soldering component leads. And I want to make one component a little bit longer than the rest. So just like before, I'm going to come up, get it there. But we're going to give it a width of 8 and then a height of 0.6. All right, so now you'll notice that my copper lead is off the edge of my, my sheet. So I need to go File, Document Properties. If I don't do this, it'll get cropped. And also this sheet is what you use when you click and drag in your PCB view on Fritzing, so it's good to have a good size. Expand your resize page to content and hit resize page to drawing or selection. And now I have, this is my PCB layout part. I can go file and save as, very important, don't save as a Inkscape SVG because that will save peripherals in your SVG file that you don't want, but save as a plain SVG save as what you've got it save would you like to replace yes every time and now let's go back to fritzing so here we are back in fritzing again we want to make a 12 part component and we were editing a 14 part component so what we're going to do is we're going to close out of this without saving it won't let me close Okay, so, so we shrunk it down, and we're going to drag in a, a new 12-part component. Again, there's no 12-part SMD component in Fritzing, but what we can do is we can drag in this um, generic ICs and select 12. We're going to right-click, Edit, New Parts Editor, 
And so now we have a 12 part component with 12 pins on our breadboard, 12 pins on our schematic, and 12 pins on our PCB. So here we're going to go file, save as new part, and so this is going to be QFN YouTube. Gonna hit OK. And now we're going to go gonna go file, load image for view. And we're gonna open up our our YouTube QFN two 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 two. We're gonna open that. And there we go. And now we have it marked in view. Come on. Fit to window. Okay. So we're going to go select graphic for pin one, and we're going to work our way around for each pin, selecting the graphics. Now that we have all of our pins selected, what we're going to do is we're going to save this. OK. We're going to close out. Okay, so looking at a clean breadboard, we're going to drag in the IC that we just created. I'm going to rotate this. And then we're going to come over to our schematic. We're going to look at this 12 pin IC. Let's drag in a something from core. So let's say that we've created a magic IC that uses an, a resistor and a capacitive value to, oh, flash an LED. So in classic style, we're going to drag our cables together. Come over to our PCB, and there we have it. We have a, stand it up on the bottom. We have our 12 pin connector that we can use There we go. We can drag that out and we have a custom non-standard parts number, part number surface mount resistor. So thank you very much. Uh, there'll be a couple other, there's a couple other videos and we'll go over how to update the schematics.